In this video, I'm going to be going through how to set up the practical equipment to measure the resistivity. Wait, wait, you're doing an experiment? Yeah, absolutely. All Come right, on. yeah. Take perfect, a seat. Yeah. Um, now, this one can be a little bit fiddly, so I've got some help from Z Physics here. Hi, everyone. Who's going to help me with the equipment? Disclaimer, I'm actually a theoretical physicist, but I'll try not to set things on fire. So. Okay, no, this should be. Although, this one, I guess one of the, the, the possible hazards is that because we've got a low resistance wire, even with a fairly low potential difference across it, we're going to have quite high current, and therefore you can get a bit of a heating effect, which potentially could cause burns if you touch the hot wire, but also actually means that the wire might increase in length, and therefore we're not getting a good read, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So uh, we've got some Constantin wire in this case, but you can use other kind of things, whatever you might be given by your teacher. And in order to work out the resistivity, we need to know the resistance of a certain length of wire of a known cross-sectional area. So the first thing is to measure the cross-sectional area. Um, the best way to do this is with a micrometer. Now, hopefully you've had a chance to use one of these. They can be a bit fiddly um, in both using them and actually reading from the, the kind of vernier scale at the top. So uh, the best way to do this, as I'm sure you've seen when you've done other experiments, maybe looking at the young modulus, is to uh, very gently tighten the jaws <clears throat> and then you just use a small dial at yeah, the very end there. for the last adjustment and you Oops. just do that until it clicks and that means you know you're not going to be crushing the wire. So you want to be doing that in at least three different positions um, along the wire and that means when you do that and you kind of close it together and you just, so it's a little bit tricky isn't it? And then just use a small dial at the end and then you just dial it in with a small dial until it clicks. And that means you know that you've not applied too much pressure. And again, you can just take the reading from that. So uh, at least three readings for the diameter. And then this is probably my favorite equation that people don't talk about <laughs> is the area is equal to pi d squared over four. Same as pi r squared, but I just think you're measuring the diameter. I completely agree. And therefore you're just gonna use the diameter in your reading to work out the area. And of course that's gonna be a really small number because that's going to be often less than one millimeter. I think this skill as well in a practical appears so much in your exams. You could be doing a practical on elasticity, for instance, or Hooke's law, where you might have to use the same skills or in a completely unfamiliar situation. So being able to use a micrometer, knowing that you have to take multiple readings, then find the mean, this will score you some marks. Definitely. Okay, so the setup I have here is probably one of the most simple circuits for an A-level practical. Um, what we have is a piece of this wire that I've stretched out onto the meter ruler. This is the hardest thing because it's very hard to get the wire um, completely straight without any kinks in it. Um, at one end, I'm going to use a crocodile clip and carefully attach this so it's at zero centimeters. Okay, and then we're gonna take the other end of this wire uh, at a certain length. So again, this is where you need to think about having a good range of readings. Uh, and maybe you might start at 20, go up to the meter, whatever it might be. So at the moment, uh, I'm just gonna put it at 30 centimeters. And this is a bit where, if I don't hold that properly, it might start to kink the wire and twist it a bit. So if I could ask you to hold that there. Luckily there's two of us today. Exactly. Uh, and also here, uh, you want to be really careful about reading that uh, reading here. So making sure there's a good connection between the crocodile clip and the wire, uh, and then you can then measure that distance to the nearest millimeter. Now this is going to be set up in series with an ammeter. So I've just got an ammeter here that I've connected up with a power pack. The exact number here doesn't matter too much, but I think with about three volts, that's gonna mean that we have a current that we can read without it causing too much of a heating effect. And you can see that when I connect this, we get a current. In this case, it's about 1.28 in the wire. And I'm just gonna connect that for a short amount of time. I could use a switch, but this just means we're gonna minimize any heating effect in that. Now, in order to work out the resistance, because what we need to do is look at the resistance over different lengths of wire, in order to work out the resistance, we need to know the current through it and the potential difference across it. And that's where I've got the voltmeter here. And so with the voltmeter, here we go. This is, this is why I need two people. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, the color of the wires does not matter but I just used the red wires so I could see very clearly which was my uh, series part of the circuit. And this just shows very clearly that this part is in parallel 
That's uh, the tip the I always use to give students as well. One of the parallel components, just put them in a different color. You, you can see how clear this is. Yeah, and so now uh, when I connect this up, again, we should have that current of about 1.28 approximately. I've got 2.51 volts on here, which is slightly different to the reading on the, um, on the output of that. So I'm gonna use this reading and that reading in order to work out the resistance of that length. And it kind of smells of burning, doesn't it, in the office? Oh, yeah. In the studio, yeah. So um, even though that was only connected for a short amount of time, with a short length of wire of low resistance, we're going to have a massive current. And what we can see is if you want to move that towards uh, the end of the wire. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to hold on to this carefully while we unclip it. And again, you want to try and make sure that there's no kinks in the wire. Uh, we should find that as we have a longer length of wire, and I can just connect this up again. And again, this is where you want to make sure you've got enough wire in the circuit. We've now got uh, about 2.7 volts across this, but now the current is about 0.58. So a longer length of wire means a higher resistance and therefore a smaller current. And of course, with this experiment, you can then take values for the length that you plot on the x-axis. You look at values for the calculated resistance on the y-axis. And ideally, you should get a straight line of best fit, but that's not always the case, is it? No, very often you may get a systematic error. Maybe there was an error in the exact positioning of this, so there might be a little bit of uh, extra length. Now, do not worry if the graph does not pass right through the origin. In order to find the resistivity, we're going to be using the gradient, and remember, a systematic error will not affect the value of the gradient, just the value of the intercept. So we're safe. Brilliant, and of course, once you've got the value of the gradient, you can multiply it by your calculated value for the cross-sectional area, and that should give you a value for the resistivity. Now, this number is going to be quite small. Um, it's a bulk material property, uh, and it's going to be often in the order of 10 to the minus 7, 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. So that was just a brief introduction to how to set up the equipment for looking at the resistivity of a wire. Dead Physics, thank you so much for your assistance. Thank you very much, and thanks for the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs>